And joining me now for an assessment of Liz Truss' rise to the leadership of the UK's Conservative Party is a lecturer of politics and international relations, Liverpool Hope University um, in the UK, Dr. Bola Adidurum. Good to have you join us. Thank you very much for having me. So Liz Truss is taking office at a very difficult time for um, the UK, especially when you look at the cost of living and energy prices. What sort of policy announcements would you expect her to make in the coming days? I think that during um, the Austins and during the period of campaigning for the leadership of the Conservative Party and to be Prime Minister, she did uh, mention that um, and acknowledge that uh, the cost of energy prices that are set to go up would be a priority. And we have had indications um, almost overnight that she is planning a, a £130 billion intervention that will keep energy prices at um, not an affordable rate because it's still about £2,500 cap that uh, she's looking at bringing it down to. Uh, but that is the sort of intervention that uh, uh, Liz Truss has, has just recently announced and uh, we're getting feelers that that may be the intervention that uh, our government announces as soon as, uh, as, soon as possible. Uh, so on one hand, she is making that kind of intervention, but I think that we also will be seeing other conversations around uh, inflation, how the government uh, intends to tackle inflation. And possibly also we'll be hearing more uh, conversations and um, announcements around uh, what she plans for um, um, uh, the Ukraine. Mm. And, and those are all on the domestic front. But I want to look at her, her foreign policy with you now, because I know that that's especially your area of, of expertise. Um, she is, I mean, the EU relations has to be a very pressing issue for, for her, especially when you look at some of the messages coming from Europe. Um, they are congratulatory messages, but also with veiled warnings as well to her. Um, how do you expect her to respond in the coming days to some of, this, some of the messaging in these congratulatory messages? Well, well, Europe has no choice but to work with the current Prime Minister of, uh, of the United Kingdom. Uh, even where there has been some tensions in the past, uh, particularly uh, the kind of things you said about Emmanuel Macron, who is the, uh, um, um, in France, and the uh, sort of ways in which uh, uh, Sergei Lavrov, the foreign uh, minister of Russia, has described that. All of those things will have to take a back seat because she's now the prime minister and a representative of the United Kingdom. And as, a, as one of the powerful countries in the United, um, in, the, in Europe, um, Liz Truss would, would, would have to be taken seriously. As, as I've mentioned, uh, I think as foreign secretary was, was filled with some controversies, uh, um, um, but I think those things are, are now well and past behind, be, that must be put behind that by now. Mm. Um uh, although when she speaks, she, she does commend the former Prime Minister Boris Johnson of um, his work on Brexit. She almost, she sounds as though Brexit is done, but Brexit is not actually done, and that's especially because of the Northern Ireland Protocol. And September 15th is a very crucial date for her. That's when um, the UK is, is expected to respond to the infringe, infringement proceedings by um, EU. And, and what, there are some, some sort of concerns that her response, especially when you, if you have followed her through the campaign, that there might be, um, she might have trigger a trade war between the UK and Brussels. Is that the concern also in the UK? Well, she is increasingly becoming a very, um, um, you know, right-wing politician through and through. Uh, she is a Boris Johnson loyalist through and through, as, as you've rightly mentioned. Um, and I would not be surprised if she completely, um, uh, you know, if she triggers Article 16 and uh, collapses the deal on uh, Northern Ireland pro Protocol. I think that what we've seen with Liz Truss is that she's very awkish um, in her foreign policy um, uh, approach. And that's why even on Ukraine previously, she's taken very strong positions uh, on Ukraine. So I'm not going to be surprised if she takes a very... Uh, a strong position on the Northern Ireland Protocol uh, and and uh, uh, completely collapses the deal in a way that does uh, you know people were not expecting or people previously would not have thought. Mm. And I fear that she might suspend parts of, of, of the 
uh, suspend parts of the treaty. But let's look at the larger Europe, because uh, whilst there is Brussels and the EU, there, there are also countries like Estonia what, that has very good relations with the UK. What sort of role do you expect that to play in um, the larger Europe? Well, Europe is at the at the pivotal moment in its history. I mean, the the war in Ukraine, particularly, as uh, you know, has come at the point where obviously uh, there is a downturn in the economy, but at the same time, there is a there is a sense in which Europe feels that it has to stand up um, to 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 Russia. It has to stand up to Russia's aggression. So I expect that. Uh, what she would continue to do is to uh, continue to pursue the sort of poli policy that uh, that she, uh, the Boris Johnson government um, set out. I mean, as you rightly mentioned, she was the foreign secretary of, of Boris Johnson. She must have had a bit of latitude also, even though it was Boris Johnson's government, she must have had a bit of latitude in also determining the tone of the Boris Johnson's approach to to foreign policy. So I think that it's going to be, if anything, it's going to be a continuation of Bor uh, uh, Boris's approach to, to the EU, stay strong on behalf of, of Ukraine, continue to support Ukraine, uh, but at the same time also stand up to Ru um, uh, Russia's aggression, continue to involve partners across um, across Europe, uh, from Germany to Estonia to, uh, to, to Norway, Finland and, and Sweden, and creating this ring, ring around uh, around Russia. So those, that's the kind of approach that I think she will inevitably have to take because um, uh, that's the only approach she, she can, uh, given uh, uh, um, um, her previous, ex um, I mean, her previous attitude towards um, 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 Europe and, and Russia mm. as far as foreign secretary. Uh, let's talk about the issue of migration. Um, that's also a very big issue here, especially for the UK, when you look at that deal with Rwanda, uh, she has also her policy set when it comes to migration. And you mentioned um, Emmanuel Macron earlier. Some of that also has to do with uh, a migration deal UK has with France. How do you expect, do you, do you see the Rwanda deal going on under her whilst she's prime minister? As I mentioned, she has increasingly become a very right-wing politician, and which is very interesting because uh, in her youth, she was a Lib, Lib Dem, she was a centrist uh, um, uh, in terms of her politics. But increasingly over time, uh, she's, she's taking on right-wing ideas. Uh, even when, um, we, when the Brexit um, referendum was being held in 2016, she was on the Remain side. But when it became politically expedient, she became uh, on, uh, on, on getting, I mean, she, she took on the idea of getting Brexit done. So I think that what we will see is for her to continue to move towards the right. And that means that she has mentioned previously that she supports wholeheartedly the Rwanda policy. And I do not see that the possibility that she is going to be reneging or moving uh, back on that. Um, unfortunately, uh, the Home Secretary Priti Patel has, has resigned, uh, which would have given us a, a kind of clearer uh, assurance that Obviously, the uh, the government will be continuing with the Rwanda policy. But generally, I think that mistrust is in the camp that believes that uh, the issue of immigration has to be dealt with, and one of the avenues of dealing with that is through this Rwanda uh, deportation policy, which obviously has uh, uh, gathered a lot of um, controversy. So I don't see her changing this policy at all. Mm. I guess that explains her statement during her acceptance speech, where she said that she ran as a conservative and will govern as a conservative. Thank you so much for talking to us, Dr. Bola Didoro. Thank you very much.